Hi and welcome to the sixth section of this course. In this section, we are going to take a look at some of the advanced concepts of Redis management and the Azure Redis Cache service that are provided by Microsoft on the Azure platform. In this section, we are going to take a look at how we can configure the security of the servers, how we can maintain and manage the scalability and high availability of the servers, and we are going to take a look at how we can persist the data using the Azure storage. We will also take a look at how we can replicate the storage across the globe. In the first video, we are going to take a look at how we are going to enable the non-SSL ports. Although it is counterintuitive from the security standpoint that we are going to enable the non-SSL or the non-secure ports, but you might need the non-secure port where the communication does not require a TLS or SSL based certificate. One of the examples of such programs are the legacy or the older programs where the library used does not have the SSL support enabled. The non-SSL channels can allow anyone or everyone to connect to the server and communicate without requiring to communicate through a certificate, a valid certificate that has to be used on the internet. But it is recommended that you always consider using SSL ports only and the SSL certificates are also managed by Microsoft Azure so you don't have to pay anything for that. Let's go to the Azure portal and try to see where and how we can configure and allow the non-SSL ports to be used. In the Azure portal, you can go to the settings. Under the advanced settings, you will be provided with the buttons that you can use to configure either to allow the access via SSL only or to enable the clients that are not using the SSL to communicate and store or fetch the data from the servers. By default, it is set to yes, but you can set it to no as well. And once that is done, you will be provided with the non-SSL port that you can use and allow the server to communicate on the non-SSL based channels as well. You can see that both the ports are different. The 6380 port is for the SSL port and the 6379 is the port for the non-SSL communication. So you will be using this port while communicating with the Redis client on a non-SSL port. Apart from the SSL configuration, another major configuration available over here is the policy that you are going to use once the Redis server hits the maximum memory limit. The dropdown provides you with a few options that you can use or configure the policy to perform the action once the maximum memory limitation has been hit, such as remove the keys or the data randomly or decide which of the objects are going to die first and then use them or remove the data that nobody is currently using or is less frequently accessed. So these are a few of the settings that you can define and control all by yourself. In most of the cases, you should leave it to the default because Redis server has been configured in such a way that it knows which of the data is important in the cache and which of the data can be removed as needed. And coming back to the topic, it's again a recommendation to always enable the SSL and use the SSL channels to communicate on the internet only because you never know when some potentially sensitive information such as a credit card information can be shared. The reason behind that is that the SSL ports use the certificate and all of the information travels in encrypted form on the wire and only server or the program that the user is using knows what the data was all about. So the man in the middle attacks are less. The SSL can only be removed for the legacy purposes and even so you should not allow any sensitive information to be entered such as the credit card information or personal details such as social security numbers. So that was a tip for the security standpoint in the certificates.